the road the road uh, clearing yeah. I think we're going to start so that we can move right along good evening and happy new year please rise for the pledge of allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Well, this is our first business meeting of the year, and um, just wanted to say Happy New Year to one and all, and to let everyone know that we had a very lovely swearing-in ceremony for those elected officials, Sue McCann, town clerk, and Jim Ross, and Bill O'Neill, and Mickey Strowinski, the newly elected officials, on January 1 at 10 a.m. Your faithful servants were all here, and... Uh, it was really a pleasure, and I think I wanted to say, since I was a spectator through this, that it's always a very moving thing to see citizens take responsibility for leading their community, and this was no exception. And these people um, put themselves out there for the sake of the public, and I just want to acknowledge that it sounds and looks sometimes like such an easy thing to do, big deal, you know, you have a few meetings a month and you go home, when in fact um, many times we have many sleepless nights over some of the decisions we have to make and the problems that come our way, and uh, in the winter we're keenly aware of some of the problems that can come our way. So. I just wanted to congratulate you all again and thank you again for your service you. and willingness thank to you. run and serve the community. So we'll start with the monthly statement of the town supervisor for the December 31st, 2013. To the town board of the town of Red Hook, pursuant to section 119 of the town law, I hereby tender the following detailed statement of all monies received and dispersed by the supervisor during the month. The grand totals were, our opening balance was $2,882,892. We received $681,833. We dispersed $942,550, leaving a balance of $2,622,175. All of those not to the exact penny. Um, but when Debbie finishes balancing the books, it will be to the exact penny. The, the pennies are here if, if anyone cares to read them. Uh, there are some budget adjustments, and I turn your attention to those at the back of this um, compilation. In the general A fund, you will see some budget adjustments. They are as follows in, uh, and, and you can see the detail. We will reduce revenues $25,106. We increased revenues $63,303. We reduced appropriations $35,030 and increased appropriations $73,227. So we appropriated the fund balance in the amount of $98,333 and reduced the appropriations in that same amount $98,333. In the general B fund, we reduced revenues in the amount of $9,570. We increased revenues in the amount of $11,770. We reduced appropriations in the amount of $18,570 and increased appropriations $20,770. So the offset was $30,340. We appropriated the fund balance and reduced the appropriated fund balance in that same amount. In the Highway DB Fund, we reduced revenues $16,500. We increased revenues $5,400. 
We reduced appropriations, $48,075, and increased appropriations, $36,975. So you can see the total offset is $53,475 appropriated from the fund balance and reduced appropriations. In water, we had a reduction in appropriations of $630, and in like kind, we increased appropriations in that amount. And finally, in capital projects, we increased revenues $202,458. We reduced appropriations $4,000 and increased appropriations $5,000. You can see there the, the uh, detail of those appropriations. So in the offsets were we reduced appropriated fund balance $201,458. So that is the total of the um, to's and from's in the, all of the funds. Has anyone any questions? Hearing none, the above is a true and correct accounting of the balances shown in the books of the Town of Red Hook at the close of business on December 31st, 2013. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Is there a town clerk's report? Yes, there is. <coughs> town clerk monthly report, December of 2013. Total local shares remitted to supervisor for town revenue, $1,543.04. Amount remitted to New York Ag and Markets for the spade and neuter program, $92. Amount remitted to New York State Department of Health for marriage licenses, $67.50. Amount remitted to New York Department of Racing and Wagering, $30. And amount remitted to New York State Environmental Conservation, $51.96. For total state, county, and local revenue of $1,784.50. Pursuant to section 27 sub 1 of the town law, I hereby certify that the foregoing is a full and true statement of all fees and monies received by me, Sue McCann, Town Clerk, Town of Red Hook, during the period stated above in connection with my office. Um, I also have the um, October ab abstract and the December abstract. <clears throat> uh, the first one I'll be reading is the October abstract. General A. $55,568.03. General B, $26,994.47. Highway DB, $168,608.23. PDR, $288.75. Capital Project, Sism Road Bridge, $3,060.68. Um, <coughs> Capital Project Highway Garage New, $9,250. Highway Garage Demolition, $644.01. Um, SL Lighting, $4,474.91. Water O&M, $8,497.11. For a total abstract of $277,386.19, and I hereby certify that vouchers numbered 16761 through 16925 processed in the month of October are an accurate reporting of the abstracts approved for payment by the town board. So that's the first abstract. The next one is December of 2013, and this is for vouchers 16926 through 17070. Out of the general A was paid one, $128,784.15. Out of the general B, $44,380.44. The highway DB, $111,421.43. P 
PDR 36750, the um, Capitol Highway Garage New, $2,148.62. Highway Garage Demolition, $66,968. SL Lighting, $4,234.82. Um, Water O&M, $6,869.26 for a total abstract of $365,106.90. And that was the December abstract, and the vouchers were 16926 through 17070. And I certify that those were paid in the month of December. Um, I also just wanted to <coughs> remind everybody that their recycling permits are available, the new ones for 2014. You can either buy them out at the recycle center or stop at the town clerk's office, or we can also do it by mail. Um, just want to remind all residents that dogs within New York State all need to have licenses. So uh, just bring your current rabies and come on into the town clerk's office. We also, um, I have uh, sent a notice of receipt of the tax roll and warrant to the newspapers, and it's posted at the town hall on the web. And basically what it's doing is saying that I've accepted the, the tax roll and the tax bills, and I state that I'll collect from February 1 through May 31st from 9 a.m. to 4 o'clock, except for Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. And it says um, after uh, February 28th, you get a 2% increase, then after that it's 3 and 4. So this has been posted in the newspapers. One other little thing, <laughs> sorry, we had the Hudson Valley Blue Star Mothers had contacted me at the very end of November. Um, we used to have a box here, it was Hugs for Homes, and what it was, it was sending little treasures to our troops, um, you know, to make them feel like they're at home. Um, just little things from us. So there's a new organization, the, the Hugs at Home has stopped, but there's a new organization Hudson Valley Blue Star Mothers, and they've also asked to put a, um, a donation box at the town hall, and we gladly said yes, and they will take care of picking up everything. And this is just to really uh, send care packages to um, the, the military to support the community. Oh, one last thing. The tax bills are going out this Friday. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> it's okay, Sue. I get mine, too, so. <laughs> We're not holding you personally responsible. No, I know that. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Sue. Has anyone any announcements? Bill, have you any no. announcements? Terry? No. Okay. I, Brenda? Sure. I just want to remind everybody about the e-waste recycling, the Electronic Waste Recycling Day. Uh, it's a free event on this coming Saturday, the 18th, <coughs> from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. And for that day only, you will not need a recycling permit to enter the town recycling center and bring your electronic waste. This is an effort uh, sponsored by the town and the village and Bard College. And special thanks to our Bard students who will come and to our highway superintendent who agreed to um, drive uh, the big pickup truck that the highway garage has and provide pickup for people who need some extra help. If you need extra help with this, um, you can call the town clerk or the village clerk if you live in the village of Red Hook and ask for a reservation and someone will come to your house and give you a hand. Did I forget anything about that? And normally the permits at the recycling center are $15, by the way. And uh, there was one other thing, Sue, and that was um, the we had representatives from two of the local food pantries come to one of our December meetings, and I heard from the uh, pantry affiliated with the United Methodist Church that as a result of they, that, they got about $1,000 in donations. So they thanked us for letting them come. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Good, good. That's all I have. It's always, always good to know that, that some of the um, outreach gets, gets to great, people yeah. who have such generous hearts. And in, in that regard, I wanted uh, the only announcement I have, there's, there's a lot of political stuff flying around, and I really didn't want to take time tonight to react to some of what's going on in, in the state and national. Uh, we're, we're all aware of the challenges ahead, and um, 
they will become more apparent as we go through the year. But there was an announcement that came through today, uh, an immediate release, a uh, press release. It's a very local one, and I thought it was worth uh, reading because it's very touching about local people helping each other. So I thought I would just tell you about it. The title of it is Love Heals. Come celebrate Valentine's Day with the Health Alliance Oncology Support Memoir Group. The date is February 15th. Snow date is February 22nd. The time is 7 p.m. at the Red Hook Village Hall, 6467 South Broadway. There will be readings by members of the Health Alliance Oncology Support Memoir Writing Group and they will be offered to the public. For the past two years, every Thursday this group has gathered to share their written work aloud. Most, though not all, have been writing for years. Many have been published in various genres, but this is different. It is a place where lives touch. You can sense the excitement and warmth in the room. And it talks about the reader, Abigail Thomas, leading the memoir group of Kingston's Oncology Support Program. After her daughter was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, um, in the fall of 2013, the group published an anthology of some of the writings titled "Holding On, Letting Go." The volume is a collection of stories by people who learn to look death in the eye and to savor life's gifts. It's hard to imagine more meaningful work, and works from this book and others will be read that evening. The evening is entitled Love Heals. Holding on, letting go is the name of the book. And again, the event is February 15, 7 p.m. at the Red Hook Village Hall. And I thought that was just so typical of the good work that's quietly being done in the town and village of Red Hook and village of Tivoli. So that's it for announcements for me, and now I'd like to open for public comment for a few minutes, and then we'll have a public hearing about the Water Department. Carrie, I invite you to step up to the microphone and talk to us about the good work that you and Red Hook Can does for the village and town and the community overall, region. Carrie Fuhrer. I'm Carrie Fuhrer from Red Hook Community Arts Network. Uh, we've been working for a little over three years in Red Hook to uh, bring um, culture to town for the benefits of the arts workers here, for the visitors, for the residents, and for the merchants. And uh, you've probably been aware of some of the things we've been doing. We have a, an ongoing art gallery. We do about um, 10 exhibits a year. We did the um, outdoor Sculpture Expo last summer, which won um, an award, an important award. Um, we are planning right now our third annual literary festival, which takes place in April, and the very popular new Red Hook Film Festival is in the works for this year. So we've been doing all this for with a, a very slender budget <laughs> and a very small core of volunteers. And we're really facing a crisis right now, not so much in money, but really with volunteer help. Uh, some people are starting to burn out, and as often as we've asked for uh, help from the, from the community, um, you know, it's been pretty sporadic. So it's been a small core of people, you know, just doing a lot of work. So we're kind of just trying to get the word out this week while we're starting our new year. Uh, anybody who's interested in um, participating, we have a meeting at the gallery next to Village Pizza in the village uh, this Thursday, that's the day after tomorrow, uh, at 5.30. And it's bring your own chair, because we don't have a lot of our own chairs. And uh, bring your enthusiasm and see if you can help us out and help your community out. And we'll see if we can kind of um, get ourselves realigned a little bit better. Thank you for this opportunity. You're welcome, Carrie. Thank you for all you've done. The energy in that group is just amazing. And the products are fabulous. I said to Carrie before, just so the board knows, that I, we have had this room stripped down t from a lot of artwork that's been here for many years and I mentioned to her that, that we have from time to time events like Arbor Day where a lot of people come and celebrate an activity over a long weekend and, and for that matter the room gets a lot of use with senior citizens groups and others and 
I invite you again to take back to Red Hook Can the thought that should you want exhibition space for a period of time, a month or six weeks or whenever, you know, just we'd be happy to um, exhibit here on your behalf. You'd be honored. And let me add that we have exhibited in our gallery, uh, by actual count, 150 local artists. That's wonderful. Wow. You wouldn't think we had that many. Amazing. Years. We did. Amazing. That's amazing. And where could people reach you? Because this won't be shown on Panda until Monday after your, so the after your meeting. All right. right. Um, our email address is redhookcan at gmail.com. And just send us an email if you're interested, and we'll get right back to you. Great. Thank you so much for coming. Thank it's you. just great to have you here. Okay. Um, we're a little bit ahead of our time. Would it be awful to go ahead and have the public hearing, or should we wait till the 8 o'clock time? Skip this okay. So what we'll do, thank you, Carrie, and good evening. Um, what we'll do, I think, is... If we can skip to the topic of the Association of Towns for a moment, I think you all have it. <clears throat> Every year, the New York State Association of Towns sponsors a training school and annual meeting for public officials and volunteers. And that training will be held this year again at um, the, the um, Hilton Hotel. It is designed to educate those of us who are serving in the capacity of local officials. And um, it is appropriate for town board members, building officials, planning and zoning officials, town justices, tax collecting officers, fiscal officers, public works and highway people, town clerks, town court clerks, and town attorneys. The first morning is the 16th, I believe it is. It's Sunday. Yes. We register for uh, the Sunday opening date. And it is a Monday, Tuesday, full day of selections of courses that one can take and um, most of us try to take those courses that are that we either feel are a need for us or are in our area of interest um, the association of towns is a membership of um, towns throughout new york state and they like to um, get participation, half participation on the part of all of the municipalities. We have had to refrain from doing this for budgetary reasons up until this year and we decided we really needed to um, attend this year and, and budgeted for it. We have I think um, maybe almost a dozen people who are interested in going, most of them department heads or um, people who see that there are offerings that are of particular interest to them. Um, associated with this is an annual meeting on the Wednesday after that um, two-day training period, at which point a delegate from every attending municipality gets to represent the, the municipality and vote on some of the resolutions that the Association of Towns Board has proposed for uh, lobbying state officials to pay attention to local municipalities and some of the issues that they are confronted with on a regular basis. You each have received, I believe you all have this um, material, do you not? And, yep. and you have the resolutions associated with that vote. Um, they range from um, continuing to support broadband access through additional funding. They're lobbying for that. They're uh, lobbying for incentive for volunteer firefighters and volunteer EMTs. Um, lobbying for 
the STAR administration funding, re reinstate the funding to towns and cities to administer the school tax relief program, a resolution to um, consider alternate newspapers for placing legal notices because some of them have large circulations even though they are not uh, charging for their distribution. So they're um, trying to convince the state to change the legal requirement that a publication of legal <coughs> notices might be in something other than a daily paper. And that will be um, on the agenda. A resolution to preserve and strengthen home rule, and that is always on this agenda and always gets the support of the municipalities. Um, I could go on and on, but it, I, and I don't want to um, take up all evening talking about these resolutions. There are, I think, a total of 11, mm -hmm. and um, some of them are not new, and some of them are um, the ever-popular mandate relief resolution is there, as it usually is, and the resolution to support Federal Surface Transportation Bill, which includes funding for local roads, bridges, and transportation projects. Of course, we all we all know how important those monies are. So I um, offer that to you for your consideration, and secondly, ask you to consider uh, nominating, designating one of us, two of us actually, to. Um, attend and be designated the um, voting member. There is a certificate of designation here and it talks about um, both the officer who would be the voting member, the delegate, and also an alternate. I intend to go as best I can tell today and I understand that Brenda attend, intends to go. Jim is not planning to. Harry, I don't think you are. No. I'm, I'm debating. You're debating. I, would, okay. I have one more appointment I have to keep next week okay. to make and before I make I a decision. Think I may go. Okay, good. For sure you won't. Good. What I would like to suggest to you is that we designate myself as the delegate and Brenda as the mm -hmm. the alternate. Should I not be able to go? Could I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. <coughs> Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And that's great if, if you two decide to go. That's wonderful representation. Do um, we have to sign anything or you just... You know, um, Sue McCann, you mean in terms of the delegate? Yeah. Yeah, Sue McCann will submit that's this. Cool. You have just to place on Sue's right? signature. Right? Sue will take care of that. Um, if, you, if you think you might go, you should register by tomorrow. Right. At the Hilton, you can always cancel. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do register because it assures you of the best rate, the, mm -hmm. the um, negotiated rate from the association. You planning to go? Uh, sure. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. Let's hope for good weather. We've been there when it's not been so good, and it's it can be a very interesting place when it's a blizzard. <laughs> It's at the Hilton in Midtown, Manhattan. Oh, the city. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yes, it is. So we have a relatively short distance to go. People come from all the way from Buffalo. Oh. Of course, they didn't, they know about blizzards, so they aren't <laughs> they aren't deterred. <laughs> and it's what the sixteenth. It is the sixteenth of February. February. Yeah, Sunday through the Tuesday, and then the delegate uh, meeting of the annual meeting is on the Wednesday. <clears throat> okay. So, look at that. It is exactly 8 o'clock. <laughs> Susie, could I ask you to read the public notice sure. at the public hearing, please? <clears throat> Notice of Public Hearing, Town of Red Hook. Please take notice that a public hearing will be held by the Town Board of the Town of Red Hook on January 14, 2015.
2014 at 8 o'clock p.m. local time at the Town Hall, 7340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, 12571, to hear all interested persons on proposed modification of the water rates and charges for Water District Number 1. The Red Hook Water Board has recommended modification of the water rates and charges to increase the minimum rate from $33 to $37 for up to 9,000 gallons and from $4 to 450 per 1,000 gallons over 9,000 as further set forth in the schedule on file with the town clerk. All interested persons will be given an opportunity to be heard in person or by directing comments and writing to the town board, 7340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, 12571. All reasonable accommodations will be made for persons with disabilities. In such a case, please notify the town clerk in advance at the above address or by phone 845-758-4606 so that arrangements can be made. Please take further notice that a copy of the proposed schedule of water rates is available for review at the town hall, 7340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York. By order of the town board of the town of Red Hook, dated December 10th, 2013, Sumacan Town Clerk, Town of Red Hook. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <clears throat> and so I would like to open the public hearing and take any uh, written, read any written Sorry. public comment that is coming. A lot of public in. concern about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has yeah. anyone received any written comment? Uh, so that you, you haven't received anything. I haven't received any. Hank, have you received mm -hmm. any? Comments zero. Okay. Do you want to say anything about this before we? I guess I can just repeat what I've said before that we're trying to be prudent in accumulating reserves mm -hmm. such that we can offset a good portion of the next major expense that we have. Right. That's it. Okay. Well, I think. Um, it's very clear that the, the, the customers of the Red Hook District 1 must understand what great service they get from you and your team. Otherwise, you would have had them banging on your door. So, All we have to do is talk to some other people about rates in other districts. Yes. We thank you for keeping those rates at what you have and for all the service all these years. And the water board, not to mention all those volunteers. Please thank them for yeah. us. Ted usually reminds me of all the good work he did. Yes, he did. Before. He was on the water board when I came. That's right. That's right. Well, if, if hearing no comment, I'd like to close the public hearing. Um, yeah. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the resolution reads, whereas the operation and maintenance of Water District 1 is supported by revenue from water rates and charges paid for by customers of this system, and as has been commented in a minute ago by the town clerk, the modification of water rates changes the minimum rate from $33 to $37 for up to 9,000 gallons and from $4 to $4.50 per 1,000 gallons, over 9,000, as set forward in the attached schedule. Um, it, is on, it is on file with the town clerk, and it's done in order to produce revenue sufficient to pay the necessary costs and expenses of operation and maintenance of the district facilities for the production, storage, and distribution of water. Now, therefore, <coughs> be it resolved by the town board of the town of Red Hook that the rates and charges set forth on the attached schedule are hereby effective April 1, 2014. And I so move. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Very Thank you, you very, very Thank much. You, yes, thanks, Thank And I want to thank our attorney for the town for bringing us a resolution regarding the annual reorganization, which is the next thing on the agenda. Um, I don't think these are major changes, but let's just go through it if we can. Um, 
the Town of Red Hook resolution dated January 14th relating to annual reor reorganization be it resolved by the Town Board of the Town of Red Hook as follows. Regular meeting dates of the board will take place throughout the year 2014 on the following days in each month at 7.30 p.m. in Town Hall, the second Tuesday, and the fourth Wednesday. Additional special meetings may be scheduled and announced by posting the announcement at Town Hall as required by Chapter 22 of the Town Code and with notification to the press as required by the Public Officer's Law. Official newspapers of the town for 2014 shall be the Poughkeepsie Journal. Do we agree that it be the Freeman as well? Do you all agree to keep that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you'd so, want to talk about the observer too? Yeah. <coughs> Explain why that can't be. We don't have to, I don't know why you want to have a conversation. Um, the observer, because it's not on a daily basis. Yes, every two, I know that. Yeah. Weekly. It has to be on a weekly basis. It has to be weekly. That's and what the problem is. It has to be paid okay. circulation. Okay. It is, uh, it is getting to every house, but I realize it's... No, I understand. It's yeah. a statutory definition, and mm -hmm. it sounds like it's one of the things that... It's one of the things that the Association of Towns is looking at, and I'm sure okay. you're okay. happy to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a good local. I mean, it's, we're looking it's a at very that. good local. Yes. local paper, we, we agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and everybody looks for it and appreciates it, and it's got a lot of good, a lot of, a lot of good news. So we'll try to make sure that that articles and things of interest that we know about in advance get to one or another of you and and keep you keep you uh, in the loop in that way. And thank you for attending. Did we decide on the Kingston Freeman? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. I, I included that okay. for the Poughkeepsie Journal and the Kingston Freeman. Mm -hmm. Um, three, depositories. The following financial institutions shall be official depositories for the town of, for all town monies for 2014. Key Bank, M&T Bank, and J.P. Morgan Chase. Number four, petty cash. Pursuant to section 64 of the town law, the following offices are authorized to maintain a petty cash fund in the following amounts, not to exceed $200 per officer or one thousand for a receiver. Town clerk and receiver five hundred dollars. The town board of the town of Red Hook does hereby establish the following salaries for elected officials for two thousand fourteen. Supervisor twenty seven thousand five hundred and thirty two dollars. Town board members each seven thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars. Town clerk forty nine thousand six hundred and ninety six dollars. Town Justices each $15,895, Highway Superintendent $58,366. Number six, mileage and reimbursement. The Town Board of the Town of Red Hook does hereby establish the mileage reimbursement rate at 56 cents a mile for those town officials and employees who incur official mileage when they're obligated to drive their own vehicles on town business or when a town vehicle is not available. For the year 2014, said payment is to be made only after submission, review, and approval of an appropriate voucher by the town supervisor. Number seven, the undertaking. The town board of the town of Red Hook does hereby authorize the execution of a blanket bond in lieu of individual undertaking pursuant to section 11.2 of the public officer's law for the purpose of covering all officers and employees who collect money including the supervisor, town clerk, receiver of taxes. Uh, is that receiver of taxes collector? No, collector should not be there. Okay. Um, deputy town clerk, deputy receiver of taxes, business manager, justices, justice court clerks, superintendent of highways, receiver of taxes. Is that a duplicate? Yeah. So we'll... See. We'll do yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Building inspector and planning secretary. Number eight, check signing. The town board of the town of Red Hook does hereby authorize the following to sign blank checks for bank all checks. bank checks. <laughs> that would be interesting. Enough. Blank check. <laughs> bank checks for all town business. Supervisor Suprane, in her absence, Deputy Supervisor Jim Ross, and in the absence of 
supervisor and deputy supervisor, any of the board members, Harry Colgan, Bill O'Neill, again, Jim Ross, or Brenda Cagle. Annual financial report, the town board of the town of Red Hook hereby authorizes and directs the supervisor to submit to the town clerk within 60 days after the close of the fiscal year, or such later date as may be required for such filing with the state controller, a copy of the supervisor's report to the state controller, and the town clerk shall cause a summary of such report to be published within 10 days of filing in the official newspaper of the town. So, We are voting as a resolution on January 14th relating to the annual reorganization, all of these former um, items. And is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. For discussion, Sue, um, mm -hmm. we've done the reorg for years, but to my recollection, this is the first time as part of the reorg we brought our salaries up because they cannot be changed. No, After our public hearing, um, you know, that we approved last fall, so why is it part of the reorg? We're required to do, uh, establish the salary as part of the reorg, um, and we have been doing it for the last several years. Even though we can't change it, after public hearing anyway, because it was already done and approved, so that's my own information. Then my second question was the, the number six for the you know, said payment is made only after submission, review, and approval of the appropriate voucher by the town supervisor. Isn't that the town board? It really is because it takes it, it, it takes it, three it, signatures. It to takes three signatures. Voucher. Yeah, I was just curious as well. So I don't know yeah. the, um, so that's your internal procedure. Um, mm -hmm. You at least yeah. Have, in, I mean, each person's voucher for expenditures for their reimbursement has to go. It starts with the supervisor, I assume, from an um, employee perspective. If that's what this means, but the voucher yeah. itself from the employee gets three signatures. Every voucher is approved yeah. by the, uh, uh, so submitted to us from the department head. Mm -hmm. Once they approve it, then three of us have to sign every voucher for everything we spend. So that, I just that could say town board rather than town supervisor, all, supervisor. Or supervisor and town board, but it definitely is three people approve it. I can't. Yeah. Pay it without also, the board. So, but it's not the town board then, and then add in accordance with the. Uh, then I would add in accordance with the ordinary approval for vouchers. Because it, your it is the town is, board, right? But it's not the whole town board. No. No, it's, it's, just the it's a majority board. It's, it's a majority right, town it's, board. It's an individual audit procedure. Yes. So, yes. Right. Because sometimes you sign once and yes. two of us sign, right. which makes three. If, if possible, we all five of us sign, but we always require at least a minimum of three of us. Mm -hmm. Are we changing that? I mean, part of the reorg, it just should it, be clear. It could say by, the, by a majority of the town board, right? could say that. Well, I don't want to imply that it's in an action as a, as a board action, so I just think if you want to say in accordance with the uh, town board's, um, you know, audit procedures, is that acceptable? Because that's what you do as part of your audit for each voucher, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's what I would suggest. Uh, approval of the appropriate voucher in accordance with the town board audit procedures. All right? Okay, that's okay. fine. And that is a change, a slight change in the reimbursement rate that went down slightly the IRS rate. Yeah. I understand gas just went up nationwide, so it may, so <laughs> it may change, it change by morning. Blink and it'll change again. <laughs> Right. 56 is the IRS rate right now? 56, now. it is now. It just changed again, dropped to half a penny. No, <laughs> not to confuse the issue, but you know, a number of years they've changed the rate mid year. I know. Oh, really? Yes, they have. And the problem is so, you know, if we approve 56 and mid year they decide it's 55, oh, yeah. then in essence that extra penny has to be taxed. By the individual receiving it. That's the way it works according to the IRS. Well, so it would simplify if we just said the IRS approved rate. Just in case the IRS changes it, you know, because you never know what they're going to do. No, I mean, it would make well, it simple. I guess I, I think it would be more appropriate for the board then to re examine the rate that occurs. You know, if you want to say, you know, subject to adjustment, 
by the town board, but I think the town board should come back and look at it again if they're going to change it, as opposed to just tying it to the index. So would you would you like to say it's you know the rate is subject to adjustment by the town board? I don't care as long as we're on the same page and you know what it says. It's just yeah. I I, I mean. I, we certainly, that's why we've modified the rate here to be consistent with the RS rate for exactly the reason that you are, are indicated. All right, so how, okay. how are you, so you modifying rate? is subject to adjustment by the town board from time to time. And then when you come back, do you want to say um, uh, so as to be consistent with the IRS uh, rates? Why don't we just put 56 cents per mile to, to be consistent with the IRS approved rates for those town officials and employees? The IRS doesn't normally change them during the year. Yes, oh, they, they do. have a few they times. Have they have lately. They used to not. <laughs> yeah, they well, used to not. No. You're right. I was you, you gas was 20 you cents can, a gallon. You bet if, if the, the price of gasoline drops, you know, if the barrel oil comes down to a realistic view and it goes down, you can, you can bet that the IRS will change that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then to be exactly correct, if they drop it to 54 and we keep people 56, it, in essence, we have to 1099 them on that two cents. Oh, please. <laughs> um, wow. I'm not so sure about that. I know, but I'm that's not so sure we would go to that. Yes. <laughs> the mileage reimbursement rate of 56 cents or, or a rate consistent with IRS. Well, again, I, I, I'd rather, I'm just going to say, I'd rather have you have it say, you know, it's subject to adjustments by the board so as to be consistent with the IRS rates, because I don't think that you want to have an automatic increase in that rate that's built in if they happen to go up in the middle of the year. I think you want to come back and look at it and authorize that increase. I would just encourage you to do that. Okay. Just because fine. I don't think you want to. Mm -hmm. do, you have the, do you have the language that needs to go in this? Do you, do you know how it's Chris, put? Chris has got yeah, Chris it. Down. You're going, so, yeah, so you're going to provide it to the town clerk. She wrote it down. Okay. I'll write it publicly. Okay. So is there any further conversation about the 56 cents? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So in your file, I hope, I don't see mine, is a new, um, a new reorg, mm -hmm. updated <coughs> reorg, and I really don't know why you I didn't have it. You can, do you have another one? No, but you can. Okay, well it may be here, but it may have skipped past yeah, distribution. Oh, it may be still be on Linda's chair then. I don't know. <laughs> it was in here if I picked up the thing. Hey, I don't know. Keeps it away from her mechanical. I don't even know how that works. So thank you, Sue, for updating us with this sure. current um, <clears throat> town appointment list. And let's see. We have gone through by way of what we have just accomplished. Uh, up to, the first three. Up to regis, re, receiver of taxes. No. Mm -hmm. No, the first three is all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, if we could just move forward with this, maybe we can get through a fair amount of it tonight. <coughs> Uh, the safety officer is the highway superintendent. Can could I could I lump these in like sections of six or eight and then move on it? Sure. Okay. I would move on the whole first page. Uh, so all right. Yeah. Then let's do yeah, that. Yes. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> you know what? I would even like it better if uh, the deputy supervisor would start reading with safety officers. So um, I. I know you're tired of hearing my voice. Could you could you read some of those, Jim? And when we get to the next section, okay, which, starting at safety officer on the 2014 okay. town yep. appointments. Okay, safety officer, highway superintendent, disaster preparedness and civil defense supervisor, 
emergency interim successors, Sue Crane, Teresa Burke, James Ross, Harry Colding. Receiver of taxes, Sue McCann. Register of vital statistics, Sue McCann. Water rents collector, Sue McCann. Issuing agent handicap parking permits, Sue McCann. Assessor of six-year appointment, Scott Hobson. 13111, term expires 2019. Building Inspector 2, Stephen Cole. His EO, Building Inspector Part-Time, Robert Fennell. Director of Purchasing, Theodore Kudzi. Animal Control Officer, Stephanie Fitzpatrick, 1012. So those are just when they were, were appointed. officially appointed. So. Okay, that's what I suspect. Yeah, Thanks no, for so clarifying that. Panda representative from the town, Mary Ann Harvey, and she's been since January of 12. Uh, Panda alternate, Mark Duran, since March of 13. Buildings and grounds supervisor, highway superintendent. Justice court clerks part time, Nancy Roberts and Catherine Fell. Attorneys for the town, Robert Myers, LLP, Christine Shaw, has been with us only since 2012. Oh, no, I think no, that was. I think it <laughs> <laughs> seems like a lot longer than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> town engineer, uh, Crawford and Associates, special projects and conflicts. I think actually that's old. Um, that's a that special project and conflicts probably should come out because. Last year they were appointed as uh, a town engineer, so I think yes. that's an old designation, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think that's probably should come off. And we're firming up actually the contracts with both of these uh, consultants. So, Jim, I'm not sure. I think we should stop at Justice Court Clerks and get a motion and then talk about these um, appointments for consulting firms. Okay. So could we have a motion to approve all of the above justice clerks up to safety officer? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, regarding the town uh, consultants, there is a letter of agreement out. Haven't received it back from the attorney for the town. And we'd like to consider Crawford and Associates a holdover until some of the um, issues that we have with them are resolved within the next few weeks. So I'd like to postpone voting on those two things tonight, if we could. Is I, everyone in agreement? I don't agreement? have a problem with that. So. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so. Supervisor appointments I can do, since it might be embarrassing for you to do it, Jim. Deputy Supervisor Jim Ross, James Ross. Budget Officer Rose Ryder, Confidential Secretary to the Supervisor, Linda Stoddard, Town Historian Winthrop Aldrich. Has anyone confirmed that with Went that he's able to do it again and willing to do it again? I think he would. Yeah. I'm going to guess he would be because he has been I coming to Friday. I think so meetings. too. Mm -hmm. And Patsy, I know, is in mm -hmm. Florida but is willing to yeah. serve as assistant to him, not as the assistant, assistant to him. So I would like to um, assistant to the town assistant historian. to the town historian is how she wanted it to be. Really. Yeah. Assistant to the town. To historian. the she did not want to be assistant okay. town historian. Okay. Uh, town clerk appointments. Would you like to read those? Sir? Sure. Deputy town clerk is Claire Horst. Deputy registrar of vital statistic, Claire Horst. Deputy receiver of taxes, also Claire Horst. Okay. Highway Superintendent appointments are Deputy Superintendent of Highways is Rick Schlomer. Other employees and officers, the Highway Secretary, that position will be open. Um, Jeanette is retiring, so um, we'll not name that position tonight. What you want to do that for? I know. <laughs> She's been so great. Uh, the assistant budget officer is Deborah Kuhn. The business manager and human resources is Deborah Kuhn. Bookkeeping clerk uh, part time is Catherine Fell. Deputy assessors part time is Diane. Actually, that's that's right. Deputy assessor is correct. Is Diana Pisciano. The transfer station operator is T.J. Hackett. Solid waste attendants are. Kevin Wiley, I think, has left that position. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll strike that. 
And I think he will be replaced momentarily. Mm -hmm. By next week, we should have that replacement named. Uh, Bill Zegathy is still there, I believe, yes. right? Okay. Maintenance and groundskeeper. Um, I'd like to talk with John about that before we make that appointment, so maybe we can hold that for next week. And Recreation Park and Program Director John Kuhn. So, of all of those, um, I move to approve. There was one more on the, the meter readers to go into that. Oh, I'm sorry. Next page. Water District meter readers part time Cynthia Files, John Wittenberg, and Chris Gil Gifford. Um, I guess we can keep right on going. Contracts and consultants, the town physician coverage is St. Francis Hospital and Northern Duchess Hospital. Um, that brings to question, uh, I, don't, I don't quite know what to do because of the status of St. Francis. Mm -hmm. So um, could we leave that open until a month from now or so when we know the status? I heard Westchester put in a bid for that. It's, yeah, it's, so it's uncertain, <coughs> so I would not like to... Um, Let's just leave that open for now. Mm -hmm. That's another that one we can, we, yeah. can, we can address. Um, you know, this is the attorney is, is that attorney for the planning board, right? Planning board, yeah. So let's say that. Mm -hmm. Is Keenan Bain. Computer Software Consulting Associates is our computer software uh, consultant. We skipped the water district. Oh, I'm sorry. Water district operator is VRI. Environmental Services Inc. Planner is Green Plan Inc. Um, the town accountant, I, I do not believe Ray is willing to do that any longer, so I think <coughs> that is a vacancy. Um, Lori Doty is town CPA. Custodial Services remain Pollard's Cleaning Service. Police and court attendants are the village of Red Hook Police Department and the Dutchess County Sheriff's deputies. And I so move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So next Wednesday we'll come back. So I'll see if we can't get the answers to um, the few that we have questions about. Does Teresa have anybody to fill Jeanette's? She's working on it. She's working on it, yeah. <laughs> um, this is just to um, reiterate that on June 8th in 2010, <coughs> excuse me, the town board voted unanimously that any and all town committee appointees must be residents of the town of Red Hook. <coughs> we, we did make an exception for the EDC, I think. Mm -hmm. For people who had who owned businesses in the town. Okay, should should we should we change that uh, and vote to include residents or business persons within well, business the town? Owned, business business owners. owners within so the town. So they own property in the town. Okay. Say that no, only for the EDC, though, right? I don't. I mean, that's all we've ever done it for. That, and that was the. That was always behind it. We had very active business people in the mm -hmm. town. Um, I, mean, I don't know whether we, whether we would want them to be on, as non-resident as non non-residents as in sleeping over. No, that's a, do you, unless we said or property owners in the town, you know, because then if, you know my feeling is there they have some skin in the game if they're paying taxes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. the things. Would that would that cover us for the? Yes. We yes. About yeah, yeah, yes. 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 It so, would. Yes. It would. Yes. So property yeah. owners. That's a good way to say it, Jim. Yeah, I think. That'd be right. I think that's a very Residents good way. Property Residents or property owners. Resident mm -hmm. who's a renter, not a property owner, but you could have somebody very active who lives, you know, in Milan or something, but you know, has property in Red Hook and or business or something. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a motion to amend or property owners, Jim? I, I, I'd like to. I'd like to have, make it official. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. Yeah. What? Now what is? What it says is June eighth. 2010. So I think we can amend it to be today's date. But I still, I probably, I mean, I haven't thought about this much, but I'm probably thinking that that should only apply to the EDC. I'm trying to think if you 
I mean, don't you want pe the planning board and the CAC and you committees like that staffed with residents? Yeah, I don't think you can change the certain boards like the planning board, so I think this would only apply to advisory committees. Mm -hmm. So well, even CAC, wouldn't you want residents? I think your CAC is by, I'd have to, un by honestly, I'd have to look at your code perhaps provision required? because you have a code provision on the CAC. Um, I'd have to look and see whether that's permitted to be, but you're generally your officers are going to have to be met, you know, residents anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really for. Well, let's pass on this. Committees. We can we can decide on this another right. time. I don't so think it's crucial that we. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's right. let's figure out. Whatever, yeah, let's you know, figure out which of those does, committees. Yeah, the stature set the planning and zoning board state stature that they have to be residents, Chris. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, okay. And your CAC is based on a, um, a code provision, a, your town code provision, I think is a... Okay, uh, so Chris, if you would confirm that for a month from now. Yeah, but I think the issue would be then for all of, all of the other ones, you have flexibility to designate people outside of that. You know, So I think your resolution here would only apply to the extent that it doesn't... No, it's not well, essentially every that. committee's advisory except the planning and zoning. Planning and zoning, mm -hmm. um, no, the ethics committee and the um, assessment and, the and assessment review, review assessment. is right. set by the right. state. So those are ethics is also determined it's by the state. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a it's a public officer position. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are, there are residents who um, own mm -hmm. multiple properties, and it's a little vague as to whether they live here or live in their other property or whatever. Well, and their so residency you know is declared by their... I, I know. Yeah, that's a whole it's other issue. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. And a bottomless pit. So yeah. ethics, it's planning, the, zoning... It's issue either way. <laughs> ethics, planning, zoning, um, board of assessment review, and CAC would be the exceptions. Is that I'm right? The yeah, well, I don't think you have to specify that in this resolution. I'm right? just trying to, yes. in my own mind, right. understand. So anybody who's, a, who's an officer. Yeah. CAC, they can... Could be... Could be uh, I've I've had, again, we've I had again. We've had. You want to look at your town code provision. You have a specific right, okay. provision that right. establishes the CAC. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's, it's that. The, the provision in our code says anything about residency for the CAC. Though. Yeah, I can't I'd remember. Look at it. <laughs> All right, so you report back a month from now, Chris, in that regard. But I think what you know, you could certainly take the step that, to the extent they're not otherwise required, um, you know, folks would have to be residents, except for. Residents or property owners, unless whatever, you know. I think you can still discuss, you know. Residents or property owners, unless, unless. For which committee? Other other re otherwise required right. by state stature or something right. like well, that. Well, right by law. Okay, we'll word it that way and and vote on it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise required by law. Okay. Is that a motion, Jim? And we'll change the date on that. You want to make that a motion? Residents um, and or property owners of the town, you know what, uh, provided this does not conflict with, you know, our, but uh, state law or our zoning code. Or town code. Or town code. Or town code. Okay. Is that... Does that make sense? That to sounds good. Well, mm -hmm. so then those committees that would be affected would be EDC, trails, things like that? Right. Senior yes. citizens, right. Yeah. Citizens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that what we want? <laughs> well, I think the property owners, I, I think that would be fair. Sure. A property owner and then yeah. they could, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they, if they owned a store in Red Hook but mm -hmm. lived in Claremont, they they should be able to serve Red Hook. Yeah, and on so those on those. Once in a we had somebody didn't, and we they made them adjunct members because they were valuable, but they couldn't mm -hmm. because right. of this. Yeah, we did that. Okay, well CAC let's one, let's can we change the date on this then to tonight's date, January fourteenth, two thousand and fourteen, and vote on it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Somebody second it. Yeah, I, well I thought they did. Do you want to second it? I second. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Chris we did that little All backwards. in favor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Regular town board meetings will meet at 7.30 p.m. The second Tuesday is the regular business meeting. The fourth, fourth Wednesday will be reserved for committee reports and workshops. Um, 
department reports and so on. The monthly annual and annual reports to the town board <coughs> should be uh, department heads and committee chair minutes or reports monthly by noon on the Friday before the second Monday uh, meeting of the month. And that's sometimes a hard one for some committees mm -hmm. to meet, but we do the best we can. Annual committee and department reports shall be submitted by noon on Friday before the second meeting of February. And that's not true for CAC or Rec Commission. As you can see, they have an additional month. Um, chain of responsibility for organizational responsibility as, is as follows. The supervisor, the deputy supervisor, town board members in alphabetical order, who are Brenda Cagle, Harry Colgan, William O'Neill, and James Ross. Again, mileage is 56 cents a mile. In terms of town departments, the chain of command is the department head, the deputy department head, if one exists, then the supervisor, then the town board liaison. Town board liaisons to town departments. Assessor Sue Crane, and I would like to add Bill O'Neill to that, if that's all agreeable to Bill. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. And attorney Sue Crane, Bar College Sue Crane, bookkeeper Sue Crane, building inspector Jim Ross and Bill O'Neill, are you agreeable? Yes. Okay. Animal control, Brenda, are you agreeable? Uh, yes. Fire companies. Jim Ross and O'Neill, that is not up for negotiation this year, so you, this is a holdover from last year, I think. You don't have to negotiate that contract. Right, this year, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it will, the end of this year will have to for the next two years. For the so, following, right. right. I, think. <clears throat> um, I don't know exactly when we do that. But if you're willing, that would be wonderful. Yes. Highway Department, Sue Crane and Harry Colgan, purchasing Harry Colgan. Recycling, are you willing, Brenda? Yes. Red Hook Central School District. Brenda Cagle and Bill O'Neill are named. Are you two willing? Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, special projects, the Intermunicipal Task Force, Bill O'Neill and Harry Colgan. Mm -hmm. Town Clerk, Jim Ross and Sue Crane. Village of Red Hook, Jim Ross and Brenda Cagle. Village of Tivoli, Harry Colgan and Bill O'Neill. All in agreement in that? Yeah. All in yeah. favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Board and committee liaisons. The Ag and Open Space, Bill O'Neill. Board of Assessment Review, Sue Crane. Conservation Advisory Council, Brenda Cagle, Bill O'Neill. Design Review, Hamlet, Harry Colgan. Disaster Preparedness Committee, Sue Crane. Economic Development Committee, Harry Colgan. Board of Ethics, Harry Colgan and Sue Crane. Planning Board, Brenda Cagle and Jim Ross. Recreation Committee, Harry Colgan, Bill O'Neill. Senior Services Committee, Brenda Cagle and Sue Crane. Greenway and Trails Committee, Brenda Cagle. Do you need help with that, Brenda? Do you need a backup? Uh, I'm okay, but happy to have backup. Okay. Any interest there? Tree Preservation Commission, Brenda Cagle. Water District and for District 1 Advisory Board, Jim Ross, you're willing to stay on? Yep. Zoning Board of Appeals, Jim Ross and Bill O'Neill, okay. Mm -hmm. um, IT Committee, Sue Crane. St. Margaret's Committee, Jim, are you willing to stay on? Yep. <clears throat> Zoning Review Committee, Bill O'Neill? Yes. CPF, PDR, Advisory Committee, Harry Colgan, Sue Crane. And Sister Cities Working Group, Sue Crane. Um, is there a motion to approve that page? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Could we look at the first town committee appointments for 2014? Um, do we want to move forward with this? Are we prepared to talk about all of these? <coughs> I'm not. Okay. Are you? I'm not I'm prepared not to talk about uh, the committee yet. Bill, are, are, I have one that I am prepared, that I am uh, 
liaison to, and I was asked to bring forward to your attention, and that is the Disaster Preparedness Committee. Uh, you have received, I believe, a copy of the resume of Vin Coluccio, who has served as chair of the Disaster Preparedness Committee in the past, and then remained an at-large member, and he has um, offered to chair again this year, and I would like to uh, nominate Vince for that chair position. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. He's eager to call together the committee and get to work, so I'm glad to have that done. Um, maybe what we could do is just review where there are vacancies so that it is available to those persons on watching on Panda who may be interested. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's anything 2013. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Bill, in Ag and Open Space Advisory Committee. Um, you just the, have the one opening? And the two 13s are all up as well. Yeah, I didn't highlight those. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a vacancy or just a. Public? There is one vacancy and, and others to be reinstated. Their terms are up in the year 213. Mm -hmm. So. Where's the vacancy? Yeah, is it? Well, um, the one that's highlighted is. Oh, I think he was. He wrote a letter, resignation. Yes. Oh, he so, did. Okay. Yes. Oh, I did not get that. Well, I, mean, I don't know that he wrote it to me. Oh, okay. I, I Something floating around saying. That. So that position's vacant. Right. Okay. Now that's vacant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Bill, you will confirm with those members whose terms are up in 213? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we will all be aware that there is a vacancy on the Ag and Open Space Committee <coughs> in addition, assuming that those people will remain on. Mm -hmm. um, assessment Board of Review, we will have a proposal the next time we meet for Thursday. That vacancy, I saw that, and that's great. Good. So there is a candidate for that vacancy, and um, by next meeting we will have a, uh, an appointment presented for our approval. The CPF and PDR, looks like there are one, two, three, four reappointments. So... Harry, you and I are going to have to work on that to make sure those yeah. people are continuing to serve. We're pretty much, I think we're pretty much said reading this. I think so. Yeah. Brenda, do you know about the Conservation Advisory Committee and its composition? I don't anticipate any uh, changes, but I confirm that. Okay. <coughs> uh, design Review Hamlet. Again, there is... A chair to be appointed, and yeah, we need to get some more people. There. Yes, <coughs> and there are okay. several vacancies there. Yeah. Okay. Now that's uh, yours to work on, Harry. I'd, yeah. I'd be ha happy to. Every, we all should really be thinking about these positions. Mm -hmm. If you have someone you know who would be suitable, um, contact Harry. Disaster prep, we now have a chair, Vince Coluccio. I believe all of those persons will be willing to serve, but I need to confirm. I believe the Red Hook Fire Company may have a um, someone else in that representative, but I'm not sure. I'm going to have to confirm that. Tom um, Chrissy is still at the leadership role. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the ministerial? And the ministerium rep is that's that's been a vacancy for some time. Mm -hmm. um, I will try do my best to. Picoon is gone. Yes. I think it's Mike Mike Lane, Mikey Lane now. Mike Lane. I believe that's okay. I oh, want I wanted to. I I know I need to confirm that. Yeah. <clears throat> Economic Development Committee. Most of these people are still here and active. 
Um, I believe Beth Jones has resigned. Beth Jones is with, the exception, with the exception of She's that. She's resigned, right? But the rest of them are... Uh, are so okay. her position is vacant now? Her position is vacant. Mm -hmm. We may have actually overextended the size of that. Because if so certain people wanted to be, become on and we, oh. we put them on it and uh, or allowed them to come. No, there are nine members there and they're now yeah. eight mm -hmm. active members. Mm -hmm. So, Harry, you'll confirm with all of those members yeah, that they're Wednesday, willing to we'll stay on? Yeah, next they'll have a meeting and I'll be there. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, ethics committee, so far as I know, those individuals are willing to continue to serve. I will sure. confirm that. Greenway and Trails, we have several vacancies. Mm -hmm. Two vacancies, um, no applicants, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. That's an exciting committee, too, because that's got some real work ahead of it. Mm -hmm. And um, the IT committee has been fairly inactive, but uh, it remains with those members that we see, as far as I know. Um, maybe with the exception of Bill Moore. I'm not sure whether Bill's willing to stay on or not. I'll need to confirm that. I don't know why I'm marking yours. I don't know. No, it's okay. <laughs> I'll make a copy for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, and Jeanette will obviously not be a consultant in that regard. IMF. Bill, is that is that committee the? Oh, I'm sorry. That's a shared services. Um, what do we want to do? We want to reconstitute that intermunicipal shared services because its focus now is on the Dutchess County um, Shared Services Grant. Mm -hmm. And we have participants. Their names are um, Mayor Ed Blundell, mm -hmm. uh, Brent Kowalczyk mm -hmm. from the Village of Red Hook, mm -hmm. um, Jean Ann Schneider from the Village of Tivoli, and the Mayor of Tivoli, Brian Crana, mm -hmm. myself and Harry from the Village of Red Hook. So that and and Teresa Burke, I believe, is a is a member of that as well. Mm -hmm. Have I forgotten anyone? No, no, that's right. Okay, there should be a little set on there. So that would change to that, and, and I think instead of saying task force, it would be um, shared services, highway, uh, shared services, mm -hmm. highway. Um, Study group, really? Study group. Yeah, I hate to say consolidation because that's presumptuous. No, I was going to yeah. say working group. Working group, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Working group is fine. Intermunicipal Shared Services Working Group? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Intermun now we're at Intermunicipal Task Force. Bill, can you run through that? Well, we have everybody except the Tivoli Mayor and uh, the village trustee. We have a Brent Vulture, of course, but supposed to be a second Reddit village trustee. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll work on that. And try to get. Okay. Do we have a appointment dates for that, or, or not? We left that open. Or just seems to be every year. We do review it very rather regularly. Yeah. So it's an so annual it's an appointment. Annual Is appointment. that the question? Yeah, yeah I, seems to come up I would think it'd be better to make yeah. leave it an annual appointment. So we'll put terms as one year. All right. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. And 11 members is what it's always been. Yeah. Harry, you're not serving as Tivoli Planning, are you? Or are you? No. Is there, so does that mean? I don't know what I. <laughs> maybe you're serving as a Tivoli resident? Yeah, I was on the planning board in Tivoli when this thing started over 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Only Tivoli resident. I don't know what you Don't take me literally now. <laughs> so Terry's the Tivoli resident representative? Well, I mm -hmm. think that's more accurate than planning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not on the Tivoli. I have no official role in Tivoli now. Right. But it is true that uh, Tim Lynch is ZBA. Is that he right? is on the ZBA in okay. Tivoli. Okay. All right. Otherwise, I think that's... Is what it is. 
so you'll all confirm with us any changes in that page. Can we have a motion to approve that page? All in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody's getting lazy as we're getting punchy. <laughs> we're working toward getting out of here by 9 o'clock. I'm pushing it. How many more pages? <laughs> <laughs> can, can our number. No, we don't have that. Let me just ask a question. What did you just approve? Um, I thought you were just reviewing and we are. discussing. We are. Well, well I, I guess you're right. I okay. guess you're right. The shared, service, the shared service thing we did approve, and that's complete. This one, the shared services highway working group. And I'll, and I'll tell you who they are. I'll okay. write it out. Okay. Yeah. Any anything that was said on that page, I guess, is okay. Yeah, we've got the members, and I can tell you who they are. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And it, and we're going to change Tivoli planning to Tivoli resident. Right. <coughs> um, the planning board, we have a vacancy and two vacancies in the alternate positions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have a, one letter of interest and in, are uh, expecting another. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all I know for now. Mm -hmm. right. Traditionally, okay. the planning board reviews it before we mm -hmm. make a final decision. We're expecting yeah. another letter of interest, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And their next meeting is February 3rd, so they would like to meet any uh, people who are interested. Sure. Would, do you think that would happen at that meeting? So that we could talk about and just figure out w when we're going to talk about this. I, I can confirm with the chair that that will happen at that meeting. That would be good because mm -hmm. if if the chair and the planning board could make that recommendation to us for our February 11th meeting, that would be great. Mm -hmm. That's one that we'd like to. I think they'd like to have that wrapped up from what I hear from planning board people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Good. there's two. We're going to get another letter of interest. I got the one just in my mail now. Yeah. Yes, one. and we're expecting another, and uh, we should know by February 11th to vote on it that night. And there would still be one more position available. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, rec commission. Oh, I didn't bring John. Worked it all up today. It's in my car. Mm -hmm. it's in you have it? Car. Like it was in, in our paper. mailbox or something. Here, here. Is this what you? This area? Yeah, I'm a, but he handed it to me. <laughs> and I, they, they met last night, and I was there with them. So, if I read them off, somebody check. Um, Doug will Doug will remain the chair, and uh, the remaining members um, for uh, um, re re uh, um, commitment are Hollis Cochran, Melissa. Tom Gilbert, Shannon Miller, Charlie Nugent, Yvonne Tershetti, Ellie Miller, who was um, the high school student, but she um, was appointed as a junior, so she can be appointed for another year. Um, also another high school student, Nick Carlson, same, same situation. He's open for appointment for another year. Uh, Robin Bruno. Uh, from Tivoli, she's the liaison from Tivoli, and she should be a member. Um, has not been attending quite regularly, and myself uh, as the uh, liaison. Is Fran Bruccio still the secretary? Uh, yes. Okay, and you mentioned the Melissa. The Melissa's last name was what? Uh, um, oh, Germano. Okay, thank you. Now, now just so we, I'm a little confused on, on the thing that I've got my mail from, from John. We have the youth members, but we didn't have them listed here. We had just the seven members. Okay, the youth so, members are Haley Miller and Nick Carlson. Right, yeah, I got on the uh, sheet I got that, but they weren't on our you know our official thing. Oh, okay. Well they I don't know. Did so you I have, have them on here? No, they're not here. No, they're not. So I mean yeah. we should put them on. Is yes, they should. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. should put them and we have the liaison Robin Bruno. Yes. And it looks like the way John did this, he, um, obviously the ones that expired in 13, he extended to 15, so he must have already asked them if they're willing to continue to yes. serve. Mm -hmm. Yes, they had a meeting last night. I was there, and it's, uh, we discussed all of this. Barbara Fiore is no longer a mentor, right? So Melissa replaced yeah. this Barbara is, this is This is the updated list as of <laughs> last night. Oh, mm -hmm. 
That's okay. what you have, I guess. Pardon? Melissa he is. Yeah, there was, there was Melissa in my mailbox is, just before the meeting. So yeah, yeah. Melissa is filling the vacancy of Barbara Fiore. Is that correct? Uh, probably, yes. Mm -hmm. okay, so. She's been on for several months now, Melissa. Okay. Okay, so then. And Doug is still the chair? Yeah, Doug is still the chair. So Melissa is a committee member now. Mm -hmm. She is. Okay. What's her last name? Germano. Germano. <coughs> she lives in Tivoli. So how are you moving that we approve it just I, as, so, as this is written? So I just want a little clarification about the youth members. Are they voting members? Because this is a seven-member committee, and it's seven members without them. Mm -hmm. So I guess I need to add that that's by your code, I think. Mm -hmm. Which? You have a code that establishes your rec commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the, number of the youth members, yeah. while they're probably very valuable, I think it needs to be understood that they are not voting members unless uh, we unless yeah. we can do that. They certainly uh, enter into the conversations. I'm sure they do. Yeah. You, we can you check can. that. We can check that. And we're not going to change anything about their attendance. Well, why don't we just call them adjunct youth members? And just well, just as long as we call them youth members, that, that, that in itself would identify them. So are we ready to move on this? The, the the expiration dates would be um, would be an update from from what, that he has on this would be an update from uh, this past year. Mm -hmm. Again, I think we yeah. need to have clarification as to whether or not we have a seven member yeah. rec commission uh, or a nine member rec, yeah, rec commission. Town code chapter thirty four seven members for two year appointments. Um, That's what this was planned on. Done on right, okay. right. But this is nine members with those two youth, so it, we, it's understood that the youth are non-voting members. That's yes. what I'm trying to get yeah, at. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, that's, that's fine. Okay. Now, they're also going to be uh, two-year um, youth members? Well, well, there's one year left because they graduated from high school. Yeah, I mean, I think in the nature of the high school appointments, yeah. that would just be... They, they had two years. They were appointed last year as juniors so that they would have their junior and senior year. Um, by design on, on this committee. Okay, so I, I think that committee's pretty well it is. set. It is set. With they that last night and plan where to move on forward with this year. Okay. Yeah. What now, we should do it maybe in the future is if we're going to continue with the youth members, you know, at least put a clause on our code that, that they're allowed to have non-voting youth, um, non youth members up to a certain number. Just so that's... Yeah. You know, Two would be two would be fine. Their high school, their their high school mm -hmm. representatives. So. Yeah. And well, I think it's a good idea. Which makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did we want to move on that recommendation? Um, are you prepared to move that? No, I'm, I move that we make okay. uh, uh, make appointments uh, as as uh, listed in, uh, in in the current structure of the of the, of the proposed structure of the rec commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Jim, uh, St. Margaret's committee, can you comment, or do you want to clarify that with the chair and get back to us? Yes, I know. I can tell you that uh, Rose is still there. Paul is still there. Paul just says 2012. Mm -hmm. So maybe that means we never officially reappointed him um, uh, a year ago. Which it could be because we I think he was. I think he was unable to. I think he was unable to serve uh, last year. Yeah, yeah was, was the reason. And um, as far as I know, if Paul, Rose, uh, Kathleen, Ralph, I know they're he all resigned. still active, but I will no. confirm that with them. Okay, if you confirm these, then we'll move okay. on and uh, take that up next time. Madam Supervisor, we have to stop the tape. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have speed. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to page eight, Senior Services Committee, and we do have a vacancy mm -hmm. there, it would appear. Yes. Anyone interested in serving on the Senior Services Committee, contact Brenda Cagle or myself, town clerk. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful committee. Mm -hmm, it is. Uh, the Sister Cities Working Group does have a new composition. We meet next week for the first time this year, and I will confirm to you the um, composition of that the next time we meet.
Tree Preservation Committee, do you have any news on that? No, I expect it to stay the same. Uh, they meet next week, so I'll let you know. Good, thank you. And the Water District? I don't think. Jim, there are any changes in that, are there? No, I haven't done any changes in that. Shall we move to appoint then those members that, as they appear here? Yeah, I would have no objection to that. Moving each of them a year ahead? Uh, actually, it would be 213 would be 215, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Except for the chair, which we do annually for time. Right. So you want to read those appointments then, Jim, and we'll vote it. Let's so move that Egg Van Perry's be the chairman again for this coming year. Number one. Um, to uh, Jerry Gilnack be the vice chair for a year again. And Aren't they two years? This is two year appointments. Well, that's the, the chair. The chair and the vice chair we need to okay. do for a year for every committee, though. Every year. Yeah, okay. I'm sure. And then Lawrence Carr and Greg Fidez and John Wittenberg to be reappointed. And I think you need to reappoint Jerry Gilnack to his position for a two year appointment as well if you want to do that. Because it looks like his position expires, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that's that's right. Yes, it doesn't. You're exactly right. Yeah. yeah, that's they're just written on the same line. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Carol Little remains secretary. Yep. Is mm -hmm. that a motion, Jim? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we talked about vacancies on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I think we have some issues here that we need to discuss, so I'd like to pass on this and bring that up again next time. There's some discussions to be held, I think. And Zoning Review Committee, same thing, maybe. Do we have vacancies here? There's one. Marcia Pell's position is vacant. Is there another? Bill O'Neill? I, I think just Marcy. Just position. one. Okay, so we have an at-large community member vacancy on that committee. And the Tivoli liaison. And, and the Tivoli liaison, liaison well, right. Trent is there, but Tivoli liaison is also vacancy. Okay. All right. So we have a little work to do on that page. Okay, I thank you all very much for slogging through that. I know it's a tedious job. Okay, so it is a little after nine, and we're definitely going to try to uh, wrap it up now. I see no one here, unless there's a public comment from our guest. Um, we will, uh, I would like to make a motion to go into attorney client for the purposes of discussing contracts. Uh, so, so moved. Oh, you made a motion. I did make a motion. Second. Thank you. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you all very much for your patience. Good, good work. <laughs>